1.80 Kelvin. Hey everybody and welcome to Zero Calvin. So about a year ago I had created this video explaining how to um, create your own custom morphs, your own custom character morphs, um, you know, create the morph in Blender and bring it into Character Creator. And somebody recently just asked me, can you use this process for accessories like horns? And the shorter answer is no. The longer answer is yes, but it's a different process. And I'll show you that process now. So this is the process of how to create custom morphs for accessories. Now the big asterisk here is I'm doing this in Character Creator 4 uh, because you need to be able to export out um, and re-import um, objects. And I think you can probably do this through Character Creator 3, but you may need 3D Exchange to go through it. And I'm not really going to go through all that hassle of creating a video for software that's now a version behind, a major version behind. Um, if you're familiar with 3D Exchange then, and you have Character Creator 3, then you may kind of be able to follow along the same logic, though. So um, I'll show you in, in 4 just to keep it simple. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's get rolling here. So I'm going to be using this Demon Dude. Uh, this is actually my own custom character. I'm going to use him as an example. And he's a young demon, so he doesn't have his horns fully grown in yet. But I did actually make him a set of horns here. Actually, somebody else had made the horns. Um, I just threw a crappy texture on him just for demonstration purposes. Now, before we begin, um, we're going to export this out, delete this, and then bring it back in. But when it goes through all these processes, it's going to lose like some of the the text. It may lose some of the texturing because you know OBJs and FBXs they never save all the texture information. So what you're going to want to do is save your texture out first. So with the item selected. Go to your modify and then go to your text your material tab here and you're going to want to go here and do save material plus and this will save out um, all the textures and texture maps and shader settings for all the material zones for a particular item so save material plus And we're going to call this horn texture. And there we go. So, okay, that's saved. The other thing you're going to want to do is uh, put your character in like a neutral position. So I had put him into um, the standing male pose only because it's nice and symmetrical and even, right? If his head was tilted to the side, then it's going to make it a little weirder for us when we create our morphs in Blender. Just This just makes it easier. Um, also, of, an, of note, you'll see that um, this is indeed an accessory. Not that it matters at this point, but it is one. And you will note that um, there is no morphs in it right now. So to get this out of here and into Blender, we're going to go with it selected. You're going to go to File, Export, OBJ, Selected Item, Y up, Default Motion. Um, I am going to export materials only because uh, that should write out the material zones. And if there, you have a complex accessory or something with more than one material zone, this just keeps it all the same for you. It should. So you'll want to export out the materials, even though you don't actually need the textures. So you'll want to give it a name that you understand. So this is Horn 1 Export. Okay, good. Now we can bounce over to Blender, hit Delete to de 
get rid of your default cube, go to File, Import, Wavefront OBJ. You want to navigate to wherever you saved it at. And uh, I have a preset I like to use here, which presets to these settings, namely, um, like normally this is selected, but you actually want to keep vertex order and polygroups brought in usually all the time. So I make a preset for it. It might not be necessary in this um, context, but whenever you're creating morphs, it's always a good idea to uh, have these settings. So I normally select them and then you can hit the plus here and actually make create yourself a preset for it for next time. So I'm just going to select the, you want to select the OBJ, not the MTL, that's just the material definition. And import. And it doesn't look like anything happened, but it's only because of the size of this thing. So I'm going to press uh, the period on my numpad and it'll actually zoom in to the item. Um, and then you can actually press one on the numpad and it, it'll line it up for you head on. And I'm going to click on it once more to make sure it's really selected. So you want to see this light orange outline around it. At this point in the demonstration, I'm going to assume you know how to use Blender. If you don't, you should learn because it's so handy and it's free. Uh, and it's great for doing morphs and things like that. So the way we create morphs and bring them into iClone is we actually do them as shape keys. So with your item selected, you want to click on this thing here, which is the object data properties. Okay, so this is normally where you would go to create like vertex groups. But there's also a thing here called shape keys. So these shape keys are Blender's version of morphs, basically. So to do this, we have to first uh, click plus. And that's going to create our baseline morph or shape. So all, all that does is create the basis. So it basically just saves out the shape that you already have as the, the reference geometry, right? Then you're going to click plus again, and that'll create your first key. And in this case, we're only going to create one, but we could technically make uh, a number of these. So we're just going to call, we're going to double click on it and call this horn stretch, okay? Now with this one still selected, your actual morph selected, you don't want to be on basis, you want to be on your actual morph. Uh, you go into edit mode and create your morph, whatever change that you want. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode and I'm going to use proportional editing here. I'm just going to select some of this. Uh, I'll do a little less. Hit G and just kind of stretch this out like that. And maybe do the same on the other side. Really doesn't matter. It's just for demonstration purposes. Now, the interesting thing is when I hit tab again to go back into object mode, it changes back to the way it was. So edit mode, object mode, kind of weird, right? Um, that's because by default it's dialed into zero, dialed down to zero. So I can actually click and drag this value and play with the morph right here in Blender. Weep, 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 weep. So that works, okay? Um, just for laughs, we can make another one. So I'm going to hit plus. And we can call it horn shrink. And I'm going to, with it selected, I'm going to go back into edit mode. And we'll just do something like that. Okay. So again, with that value, noop, 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 noop. Stupid, but you know, good enough for demonstration purposes. Cool. So now 
we're ready to export this back out. So with the item selected, so Horn 01 here, right? We're gonna go to File, Export. Uh, the key here is you wanna use FBX, okay? And I'm gonna do limited to selected objects just so it doesn't export out like cameras and lights and stuff. Uh, the other catch here is if you're following along exactly, you, you're gonna wanna do um, 0.01 to the scale. Um, the reason for that is we, we brought this in as an OBJ, right? OBJs do not have a unit of measure in them. Character Creator works as centimeters, Blender works as meters. Uh, so say something is 20 centimeters in Character Creator, when it's brought into Blender, Blender thinks it's 20 meters, okay? Um, but FBX does have a unit of measure. So say if this thing was our, say 20 centimeters across, um, it's now 20 meters across, and if we brought it in at scale one, it would now be 20 meters uh, across, and that would not be a good, that would be very big. So that is why we're scaling it back by a hundredth. Okay, so that's that. And I'm just gonna give this again a name that I understand, Horn01 with Morphs. .fbx, export it out. Okay, now we can bounce back here into Character Creator. We want to delete the horns that we have. Now we want to go to Create, Accessory, and select our FBX that we just exported from Blender. And with any luck, boom, it's there. Now the materials aren't quite right, but we save them. But look, lo and behold, Horn stretch and horn shrink. Dun, da, da, da. And now, if we go to the materials and we go here to load material plus and load in our horn material, it works. Now, before we do the dance of joy, if I were to go to, even though this shows up as an accessory, right? If I say try to move his head, the horns aren't moving with his head. And that is because by default, whatever accessory you create is actually attached to the hip. So you have to pick whatever body part you actually want this attached to. So click on the horn, go to your, your attributes, where it says attached to, notice it's hip, you wanna pick parent and click on something like head for this so now it's CC head you can also click these um, the ellipses and pick whatever bone you want you know from the list so now if we move his head it's attached so now it's attached as a accessory and we have morphs for it how cool is that Yay! So that's it, everybody. Um, one last mention before I go. Now, if you do this process and you don't see these morphs right away, um, I have seen it sometimes where they don't load in right away or they don't show right away. Um, if that happens, uh, save out, save your scene, load it back in. Uh, if that doesn't work, try, um, you know, saving the accessory. So go to your custom tab, go to, go to accessory and say head for this one, click save and save it. Horn 01 with morphs. and it'll create it. Um, you should be able to delete it, bring it back in, and hopefully then you will see the morphs appear. 
Uh, if not, you did something wrong. So watch the video again and try to figure it out or leave a comment in this video saying that I'm a no good, dirty, rotten bastard and I didn't teach it right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks again for watching. <laughs> Hopefully you, it did work for you and I will see you again in the next video. Cheers.